Welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast and YouTube show for SQL Server database administrators and developers. I'm Kendra Little. On today's show, we're doing episode number 34, and we're going to talk about how to make sure that when you migrate from one SQL Server instance to another instance, you get absolutely all the data in the database. Before I get started, I've got some free courses over at sqlworkbooks.com. If you're a regular listener, you already know about this, but if you haven't caught episodes in a while, head to sqlworkbooks.com and sign up for free. I've got courses on troubleshooting, locking, and blocking, as well as tuning problem queries in table partitioning using execution plans. Right now, you can get an enrollment that is good till the end of 2017 in these courses. So jump on in there. All right, let's get to today's question. Dear SQL DBA, when we run a full backup, will it be a backup of the database as it was when the backup started or how it looks when the backup finishes? When we use backup and restore to migrate a database, We currently put the database into read-only mode before we start the backup to ensure that there are no new transactions. And this is a great question. And this is one of the ones where I'm always like, when I think about it, I'm always like, I'm 99% sure of the answer, but I always want to check because you don't want to be wrong about this when it matters, right? The answer here is that full backups, when you restore a full backup, it will restore to a transactionally consistent point near when the backup finished. So if you run a backup and it takes an hour, the end of that hour is going to be the point it restores to. You don't even have to take my word on this one, and I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details because there is already a fantastic resource on the internet that gives a lot of detail and a really cool drawing with the timeline of like backup starts, example transactions, all of the goodness. The article is called Understanding SQL Server Backups. It is by Paul Randall. It's on TechNet. So if you search for Understanding SQL Server Backups, Paul, you will find that. And I will also put the link into the blog post that goes with this episode as well. It's a great reference. And whenever this question comes up, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember this, but the, you know, the person who's asking, they really, this is the article for you. It'll give you everything you need. But with this question, there's actually more to it because there's a technique you can use that isn't just a full backup that can give you the reassurance that you're really getting all the data. Because just knowing, like you just knowing, hey, it's going to be a point near the end you don't want there to be any doubt. (laughs) You really don't. And the people who own the data, like uh, your bosses, don't want there to be any doubt either. Or if there's a client whose data it is, they really don't want to hear, oh yeah, it's a point near the end, right? They hear that word near and they're like, well, wait a second. There's also the fact that what if a transaction was still in flight at that point when the backup ended? it's going to restore it to a transactionally consistent point. And if that was still going on, we could have a problem. There is a way to solve this though. Once I, 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 at this point I was a consultant and I had a client who got a new server and this hardware was, was great. They invested in it. It had new SSDs and lots of memory and new fast processors. It was really exciting to get to do this migration, but It was a really big deal. And there was some concern about making sure we got all the data. And I, I, you know, okay, I said, well, we're going to get all the data. And then there is, my my client was very good at phrasing things. I loved working with these guys. But but basically it came back and said, well, what if we needed to prove that we moved all the data? And I thought about it and I said, oh, there's, there's a way we can, we can, Make sure that when we take our final backup of this database, we can do it in a way that actually doesn't allow any more changes to commit so that we can essentially in our final little backup, 
which is a special kind of backup. And our final little backup, we are actually gonna put the database into a state where it won't let any more data come in. And that, that way, by restoring this final backup over to the new server, we are assured no more changes were made to the old server. We can do this by backing up what's called the tail of the transaction log. Your database transaction logs have a tail <laughs> and you can back it up. This is one of those little skills that not everyone, even if you hear about it, like the tail of the log backup, not everyone learns how to do it because it's often talked about as something that you do in an emergency. Like, let's say we lose the data file for the database, like the drive underneath the data file is just wham, like someone made a mistake with the SAN and that's just gone. If we still have the transaction log file, we can do this special backup. And most of the time, if the SQL Server instance is still there, like we didn't wipe out the the master and model databases too, uh, we can take this tail log backup to get the last changes even if the data file isn't there. So a lot of people don't learn to do it because they, they haven't run into that situation, but it's still really useful for things like migrations. Here's the way the sequence goes. So on your, I'm gonna call the old instance, I'm just gonna call it old instance, and then our new server is new instance. We do our full backup, on our old instance and we let it complete. And when the full backup completes, we start restoring it to the new instance. So we're restoring the full backup, but we're doing it with no recovery. We run the restore with no recovery so that we can apply log backups to the new instance afterwards. It may take a while for that restore to run. So on the old instance, we're still letting activity happen and we take transaction log backups as needed against the old instance. After our restore with no recovery completes, we start restoring those log backups to the new instance with no recovery so that we can keep applying transaction logs. When we're ready to cut over, we do a final transaction log backup against the old instance, and we do that log backup with no recovery. In the log backup command itself, we say with no recovery. That puts the database into a special state where no more writes can happen after that. We then restore that final log backup onto the new instance. You can restore it with recovery, or you can, if you restore that final log backup with no recovery, you can then just like restore the database with recovery and bring it online. So I generally, if I'm restoring log backups, I generally personally just restore them all with no recovery and then like do a, a final command restoring the database with recovery separately. Just, I feel more comfortable doing that because I don't want to accidentally, you know, run the wrong command. It's just easier to me. At that point, we're done. We did our last log backup in a way that didn't let any more changes in. We have proof that all the committed data has been moved over and it's actually really, really easy, right? This is just that last log backup, just two extra words, backing up the log with no recovery. Tail of the log backup sounds really hard. You know what I mean? It sounds like it's something fancy. It's, it's not hard. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. After you run the command that says back up the log with no recovery, when you look on the old server, when you look at the database, you'll see that it is in a restoring state now. When I back up a log file with no recovery, I put the database into that restoring state. You can also do this in other ways. Let's say I wanted to limit the cutover time. You could set this up in advance and essentially you're just setting up log shipping. You can set up SQL Server's built-in log shipping, which what it's doing is constantly taking log backups, copying them over, and then restoring them to the log shipping secondary server. You could choose to have the secondary in the state where you can read from it when logs aren't being applied, or you could just leave it in the restoring state. When you are ready to cut over, you tear down the log shipping, and the, the important part is you 
you have to make sure that all of the transaction log backups that have been taking, taken, that they have been copied over and restored. So you tear down the backup job first, you run the copy job, make sure they're all gone through, you run the restore job, you make sure they're all restored, and then you tear those down. Then you run manually a final log backup doing a tail log backup with no recovery. You manually copy that over, you restore it, you recover the secondary, and you're off to the races. That can take a lot of stress off of the migration to essentially already have that secondary server warm and be keeping it warm ahead of time. There are other ways to do this cutover and limit downtime. An old favorite of mine is also database mirroring. Now with database mirroring, depending on your addition of SQL Server, you may or may not have asynchronous mirroring. That's an, an enterprise feature to have asynchronous mirroring, which makes them more loosely coupled. If you're in standard edition and you can only use synchronous, depending on your, per, your concerns about performance, the network between the servers, you, you might wanna use log shipping also depending on your experience with mirroring. Technically, you could do the same thing with availability groups, but the requirements about Windows clustering with availability groups make it a little less attractive for that for me. I mean, like putting together and tearing apart an availability group with that cluster requirements, it's a little more invasive. You know, it's like your old server and your new server are kind of married. <laughs> They have a, a longer term relationship that you're gonna have to terminate, which is like mirroring's real easy to set up. As is log shipping, availability groups are a little, little stickier, I guess. <laughs> Another thing to know is that you can't do this if your database is in simple recovery model. With the simple recovery model, you don't have log backups, right? You just, you've got full, you've got differential, but the you can't use no recovery on the full backup. No, this no recovery, the tail log backup is only if you have log backups, which means no simple recovery model. And also, like I said, this tail log backup is useful to know how to do in case that emergency strikes and you're like, whoa, I, everything's gone wrong. Let's see if I can do a final backup of the transaction log because we are not in a good state. So this is one of the things that I found useful with migrations. I hope it ends up being useful for you as well to, to really be able to prove that you got all the data. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode of Dear SQL DBA. If you have a question, head on over to littlekendra.com. There is a Dear SQL DBA icon in the menu bar. It's always free to ask a question. I try to respond pretty quickly by email so that you don't have to wait forever. And also head on over to sqlworkbooks.com if you're not in those free courses yet. I love providing those free courses and I'm really, really excited that folks are taking them. So makes me really happy to see the signups. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Looking forward to recording another one soon. Bye guys. <laughs>